Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to do an example of how to take an equation like this, turn it into the general format for an ellipse and then graph it. Now of course either this will be the general form or this will be the general form depending upon if the ellipse is situated sideways or vertically. This would be an ellipse that is sideways, this is an ellipse that is vertical and it depends upon the denominators. If the denominator underneath the x is larger, it's sideways. If the denominator on the, under the x is smaller, then it's vertical. All right, now we take this equation and of course we're going to separate the x variables from the y variables in such a way that we can complete the square and want all the constants on the right side. So this can be written as 4x squared minus 8x and that leaves some space plus y squared minus 2y, leave some space, equals minus 1 when we bring the positive 1 to the right side of the equation. So now we want to find a perfect square, but before we do that, we probably want to go ahead and factor out a 4. So let's do that. So we take 4 times x squared minus 2x plus we have y squared minus 2y equals negative 1. So why did we do that? Well, it's a lot easier to find the perfect square when the coefficient in front here is equal to a 1. We do have to be careful that everything inside the parentheses will be multiplied times 4, and so when we put a number there, we need to make sure we put the same value on the right side of the equation. Okay, so what will be the perfect square here? Well, we take half the coefficient here and square that. So half of this would be negative 1, squared we get 1. So we're going to add plus 1 to that. So let me go ahead and indicate that in red so it's easier to see so we're going to add plus one over here which means we also need to add something on the right side we're not going to add a one on the right side because notice that this one is multiplied by four which means we need to add plus four on the right side of the equation okay now we also need to have a perfect square over here let me put parentheses around that and notice i take half this number right here which is minus one and uh, then I square that, I get positive 1, so I'm going to add a plus 1 over here, which means I need to add a plus 1 here as well. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and rewrite it in this form. We can write this as 4 times x minus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 1 quantity squared is equal to 4. Okay, now I want to get rid of this coefficient here, so I'm going to divide the whole equation by 4. So divide the, <coughs> excuse me, the left side by 4, divide the right side by 4. So this becomes x minus 1 quantity squared uh, divided by 1 plus y minus 1 quantity squared divided by 4. And that equals 4 over 4, which is 1. And finally, I'm going to write it in this form right here with the denominator quantity squared. So this can be written as x minus 1 quantity squared over 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared over 2 squared equals 1. And now I have it in the form that I see on the right side right there. Now, which is bigger, the denominator underneath the x term or the denominator underneath the y term? And in this case, it's the denominator underneath the y term. So I end up with a situation that looks like this which means the ellipse will be drawn something like that. It'll be a vertical ellipse. All right. Now, let's go ahead and graph the ellipse. My y-axis, there's my x-axis, and first I'm going to find the center of the ellipse. I'm running out of board space here. All right, let me put it over here. The center of the ellipse, of course, is equal to hk. Notice my h is right here, 1, my k is 1, so the center of the ellipse will be at 1 and 1. All right, so that's easy. We'll go ahead and place it right here. So there's my 1, there's my 1, so there's the center of the ellipse, and I know it's going to be drawn in a vertical direction. So the major axis, what's the major axis? Well, it's a plus or, plus or minus 2 from the center. So in that case, I'll go up 2, I go down 2, so 1, 2, so there's the vertex on the one side and there's a vertex on the other side. So that's my vertical extension of my ellipse. Horizontally, it will be plus or minus one. So that means I go to the right one and to the left one. So those are the vertices of the minor axis, those are the vertices of the major axis. And so my ellipse is going to look like this. Okay, here's the major axis and here's the minor axis. Now, 
Where are the foci? Well, the foci can be found when I find c. c is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. And so it's equal to the square root of a squared. Well, a squared is right here. That's 2 squared minus 1 squared. So it's equal to the square root of 4 minus 1, which is equal to the square root of 3, which is about 1.732. 1.732. That means that the, the foci is at that point and that point. So that's where you find the two foci of the ellipse. And that's how we do that, starting with an equation like this. You want to go ahead and write this in the sum of two perfect squares. So you can go ahead and write them as binomial squared. Make sure you factor out any number so that the coefficient in front of the x squared term or in front of the y squared term is equal to 1. Then you go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by these coefficients, and then you get the standard form. And that's how we do that.